Welcome, Illumineers. I'm your host, Rush, and today we're taking a look back at Amber Amethyst. I had a few comments on the previous deck I had, and I wanted to give a couple changes to it based on some of the other decks I've seen performing, both in my local and online, and see if we can try getting just in time to work a little bit better. And with this deck, I feel like I found the perfect balance for the deck, getting it to the maximum potential that I possibly could. Now, this deck is going to come in at $486.36. I'm calling it Amber Amethyst Blitz. The color spectrum is predominantly amber cards with a little bit of amethyst thrown in, mainly for card draw, the additional Maleficence and Pascals. It's only got 16 amethyst cards in it in the total of the 60 card deck. It's running a maximum of 12 uninkable cards, which is Lilo, Maleficent, the just in times itself as well as oh that's it actually <laughs> just just three copies of four the cards in the deck are going to start out with four lilos for its double generation of lore same thing for the four four copies of the maleficent version for its excellent lore generation in the early game we were running four copies of the one drop stitch so that we can shift later on in the game as well as having a two strength two willpower character on board in the early game and take down things like the early captains and things like that pascal can be a quite a pesky one with four copies of that with its one strength one willpower and one lord generation if you can get two of these down in the early game your opponent oftentimes can do not a lot against it which is really funny to watch you'll see that in one of the gameplays the two drop stitch is a staple in most amber decks so we're all pretty familiar with it it protects the lilos and the maleficence quite well in the early game four copies there we are running four copies of the mickey mouse three drop out of amber for its two lore generation and its healthy stats of three three four copies of the maleficent sorceress for its additional card draw and it makes a really good target as well as mickey does for singing uh friends on the other side if you need to keep the momentum going four copies of four drop rapunzel it is excellent card draw even in this deck with our just in time threes like goofy maximus and moana even stitch um, coming down on a shift target can be very good and often get some damage on them clearing it with rapunzel the following term can keep that momentum going Speaking of which, we have four copies of Goofy and four copies of Maximus, both respectively in here for their own reasons. They're excellent bodyguards. Goofy allows you to protect a little bit more in the turn three option if they get a hook in something other than another hook or prince. He can stay alive for multiple turns. The Maximus can die to that double option if you're going against Steel, so you have to be a little bit careful of that. But you can ultimately send like a pascal supported with maximus into a problem child like a maui which i've done before we also have four copies of moana for her excellent three lore generation and her six willpower allows her to stay on the board soak up some damage for rapunzel's to do her her work the additional benefit of allowing rapunzel itself to ready after questing makes her not a target which is really good Four copies of Six Drops Shiftable Stitch, which is why we run the Low Drop Stitch, is an excellent target. We do run a fair amount of Low Drops in this deck, so this can get some good card draw when not going against something like Steel or a heavy board presence deck like Amethyst Emerald. We A lot of people were a little bit hesitant on seeing Seven Drop Stitch in here because it's more of a Blitz deck, an aggro heavy deck, but this is a good inkable option but if you do end up getting into that mid to late game, like you'll see in, I believe it's our second game, you'll get a lot of utilization out of the card draw on this sometimes. And that can really push that momentum over the edge where you can sacrifice this to get some removal out of the way and then sneak in some other characters to cross you over the 20 lore threshold. Four copies of Just In Time. I debated on three, but you really do want to see this consistently early in the game. And even if you don't get it on both your mulligans, most of the time I've drawn into it by turn three, which can make it really consistent. And having that fourth copy allows that to happen. And then 
four copies of Friends on the Other Side for the obvious reasons of we want to keep that momentum going. And using something like a Maleficent ideally allows us to get three cards off that Maleficent the turn after she's played, and that keeps a healthy hand momentum. That being said, we'll get into the gameplay. You can kind of see how this all works. The deck list will be in the description down below, as well as a Dreamborn link, which will be the most up-to-date deck list I have for this, in case I modify it in the future. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments down below. And here's the gameplay. All right, it looks like we're going second. That is a turn and burn kind of hand. I'm going to send back one Maleficent and a Stitch. The double Maleficent draw really only works on, uh, on control style decks. All right, let's see here. So we will start out with inking a Pascal. Putting Maleficent on board. We'll see what he's working with. Sometimes going with the just playing out Pascal's is actually really effective early in game. But if it's going against aggro, okay, then it can be very difficult. Ink big stitch. We're going to play another Pascal. This looks like some kind of mid-range Amethyst, or Amber, I mean. We haven't had a lot of issue with Steel yet. But I'd really like to see a one jump ahead on that turn. But we didn't. So we're going to be going into three ink. So I think getting as much on the board as possible is going to be very key for us. We're not going to use friends on the other side to guarantee us that we can get the shift stitch on board, which might become very important for us for card draw. Mickey will probably take out one of the Maleficents in an attempt to slow us down. So we have seven lore on turn. Four. four. Yeah, 14 lore on turn four if he doesn't. It'll put us down to 12. or Rapunzel. That hurts. But it's a good call by our opponent. You've forgotten me is kind of annoying on this deck because turn four is about where you get down to the last two or three cards in hand. But you gotta play what you gotta play. And in this game, we are just turning everything sideways. And with three evasive Pascals on board, it might be a problem for our opponent. So again, we're back up to six lore, so he's on a two turn clock. if I would have taken the trade there, especially if he could take him. Oh, because he doesn't want the shift stitch. Got it. Oh, we might also run into a problem on our turn. We will ink one of those. Three, three Pascals might be a problem. These all have to be direct removal. All right. 
right. So, either way, that puts us at 18. Could have the board wipe. So I'm gonna play down a bodyguard. Simba, not in bodyguard. Just in case he has the rem two removals in his hand. Might have the be prepared too, which is why we kept the Rapunzel. Yep. Both these quests for two, so we'll just drop one and pass each turn. Force him to have the removal. We'll probably see a concede on one of these turns. It's taken a while to think about it, though. There it is. GG. All right, going first again. We did get the just in time with a five drop, so that's nice. That is honestly not a bad starting hand. The Rapunzel won't be useful this early on, so we can swap that out. Much better. Okay. I like it. So we will ink the Pascal. We will play a Maleficent. Pass. Again, we'd love the top deck of the Simba. here he takes it out we could wait till three to really operate these I actually think friends on the other side might be a better bet play the second one and we will pass guarantee getting the Goofy out on turn three, which allows us to double quest with both Maleficent's. Which will give us a good start. Although, they will take out the Goofy, but Goofy will clear his board. So I could drop one do we want to sacrifice more? Goofy will take out both with its three. I think Goofy is the better call here. I think we're going to ink the Maleficent. We're going to just in time the Goofy into Bodyguard. We will quest. Steel can be a tricky matchup to go into with the grab your swords option, so you just have to be aware of their singers and when they get past turn five. So, the double up here, I'm assuming. Yep. Definitely ink the seven drop Simba. Maleficent, draw Moana, both good options, if we quest here, you know, we'll at least have to think about using it for friends on the other side or something, so that's at least an option. So guarantee getting our five drop out. Yep, that's what I was hoping for. Probably trying to guarantee he can get the grab your swords. Okay, that 
that's perfect. I think in that case, let's see here. If we put her on, that's three lore each. We'll be able to both attack into there, loses four lore. Yeah, I think it's a better option to ink the Moana, force him to attack into the Maximus. And if he doesn't next turn, Maximus can go into Maleficent and then Rapunzel down to draw two more cards. There's always, uh, always that. Probably double up into the Maleficence, into the Maximus. Oh. That might have been a bad call. I am not a big fan of what he just did there. So I will clear the damage. Plus three, it'll put us at 16 next turn. I think the plan here is to actually, I might want to go for the win. That's that's what this is thinking about right here. Because if we ink this, play both these out, we can cross the threshold next turn. And he has to send everything he has into the Moana. We're going to do it. He might have the grab your swords again. We're going to take the chance. We're going to put the pressure on board. Yeah, because we need five. Or we need six and we're plus five. So actually, I was one off. Being at 19, he'll basically have no options. He's using a lot of tricks as he has, which means he doesn't have to grab your swords in hand either. Takes us out of lethal range. Could play Mickey here, but I'm going to play out Simba in bodyguard. It'll make it a little bit tougher on him to take out. Rapunzel. All we need is one. This will be pretty hard to come back from. Still has to get rid of these three. Oh, and he's saying that with Ursula too. Maleficent can take out the Simba, but he still has to take out these two. He's playing like he has it. Mm, gotcha. Let's be able to do that there. I'm going to put out the Mickey. Just in case he has grab our swords, we'll have to have another option for that too. Just forcing the options. And Mickey also crosses over if he puts out something like another Ursula. I 
I think it's best option here. His best option here would be if you dropped another Ursula on these two. Or not Ursula, Elsa. And he has it. But he's running out of cards. So we'll easily be able to take this out. That'll be taken out. I am going to... side and I am going to just in time be goofy questions do we want it to go into body grip is a four that can go into there we only take out one in that case I think that's the better bet we need to ink it to lay down the stitch. Yeah, just you grab your swords. We top decked into that one. Kill that one. Other one into Mickey. I know we can send a wrestle into Mickey. Bust with an Elsa. bet is actually to play out the stitch just because of the amount of damage he would have to deal so he has to have a an Elsa there it is GG to our opponent that was a good one Thank you for watching Illumineers. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to stay up to date on everything Lorcan. I'll see you on the next one.